Good morning, everyone. We're so excited to have colleges joining us today. Welcome to the sixth edition of the Africa Science Buskers Festival. My name is Sharon Ramsey from Queen Elizabeth School, and I'll be coordinating today's college fair. So we're excited to be having colleges from outside the country joining us today to give us a bit of insight into what it is like to be applying to colleges outside the country, as well as them showcasing their universities. So I do hope you learn a lot from this session and do pay attention because all the information you're going to receive today is going to be very helpful. So to kickstart things off, we're going to have the University of Windsor located in Canada. Over to you, Fiona. Hi, Sharon. Thank you. I hope everyone can hear me clearly. Yes, we can hear you. Um, thank you for having. Thank you for having me today. I'm really excited for this session. Um, I have a few slides that I have uh, prepared for us. Um, let me share my screen. Um, apparently, I'm not able to share my screen, so I don't know if you can assist me on that, Sharon. Just give me a second, please. Let me try. You forgive me because I am not very tech savvy. <laughs> I don't know what you guys can see. Can you see my screen? Hi, Sharon. Please let me know if you can see my screen. Okay. Yes, we can see your awesome. screen now. Thank you. You can see your rest of Windsor something. Let me know if you can see my screen clearly and what you can see.
Sharon, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen clearly. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you can see the logo in Rust of Windsor. This is your time, right? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. So good morning, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Phil Namate. I work with University of Windsor and I represent uh, Eastern and Southern African region. Basically, I'm here to support your students, give you the information that you would like to know about studying in, in Canada and precisely the University of Windsor. And also the programs that we offer, what you need to do, what we teach, how is the student life like in, in, in Windsor and so forth. So University of Windsor, we are a public university uh, founded in 1963. We've been there for quite a while. We are on the southernmost part of Canada. And as you can see, this beautiful picture is taken to two blocks away from our university. We are at the border between US and Canada. So the buildings that you can see, that is downtown Detroit, Michigan. And on the greenery side, that is Windsor. So we are separated by just the river and students who are allowed to cross over, they do cross over. Some go for co-op, some go for internship or even holidays if they have families in the US. So it is around 20 meters across the bridge. This is to show you a clear picture of how accessible we are to the other parts of um of Northern America and, and, and other parts of the world. We are one hour from Chicago by flight, five hours if you choose to go on the road, two hours on from Washington, two hours from New York. We are one hour from Toronto and four hours. So students from the, my region, they normally fly to Toronto and take a connecting flight to Windsor, which is like 20 minutes from the airport to our institution. From Detroit, we are 20 minutes across the bridge. So you just either by walk or by bicycle or by bus, it's just a small distance and you're either on the other two sides. Windsor as a city is known as an automotive city because we have the Fiat Chase Tesla and Ford Motor Company there. That is an added advantage for our students who are doing uh, automotive engineering because they already have big companies there where they can do their internship or co-op or even work. It is also known as an epicenter of international logistics in Northern America. As you can see, we are accessible from major uh, regions in the Northern America. And the busiest border crossing between US and Canada is actually the Abbasanda Bridge, which is found near Windsor. And a third of Canada US trade passes through there. This bring in a lot of business. It also bring in, brings in a lot of tourists, people are going back and forth, and a lot of opportunities for our students and graduates. So University of Windsor, I'm going to touch a little bit about University of Windsor and then we go into the STEM subjects that we offer at University of Windsor. Our student population is around 16,000 at any given time. This is, means that our student to faculty ratio is 16 is to 1. So we are able to give our students the attention that they require. We are able to support them better to make sure that they, they succeed in whatever career that they are looking for. Now, you might be wondering, if I go to University of Windsor, will I be the only African student there? No, we have around 23% international students in our institution. And I can tell you, I have a few from Zimbabwe that are already there, and others are actually going there to do other different uh, subjects. Currently, I have, uh, I believe, three that are joining us this September for their undergraduate program. So we do have students from your country. You can be able to enjoy each other's company and still practice your cultures so it means that you will not forget about your culture. Now, our employment rate is at 95.1%, and I'll tell you about it later. And we are ranked number four for student services. And then Windsor as a city is top, top one affordable big city in Canada. And we are ranked top three universities in the world. So we have been there for quite a while, impacting knowledge, producing great people in the nation that are bringing in great impact into the world. Now, our focus is on nine but we'll not dwell on all of them. So we have as humanity, social sciences, we have business, we have science, one of the things that we're going to talk about. We have engineering, we have nursing, human kinetics, education law, and also our own English language programs. I will not touch on that because today we are talking about other things. Now, I'll go into engineering. Why should you start study um, uh, at University of Windsor? 
for when we come to talk about computer science, it's top 11 in the country for the program. Now, our programs have a first year general year for those students who are not sure where they want to begin. So you have like a base that helps you understand if you're looking for civil engineering, am I going to go to environmental engineering? Do I need to go to mechanical engineering? Our first year gives you that base. It gives you that base to enable you to know, to understand better, this is where I'm going, this is what I want to do. And in the event that you're not sure what you want to do, we also have academic advising that helps you in choosing what you're looking for. Now, our, all engineering programs have something we call co-op and internship. Co-op is where you are studying and working at the same time. So it's full-time study, full-time work that enables you to get that work experience that you require. And this is why we have 92% graduate employment rate because our students already have have 12 to 16 months worth of uh, work experience. I mean, who wouldn't want to work some, with someone who already has a, a work experience? And the other thing is, it is actually paid. So you don't have to keep on calling back home for small bills. You can do things that you really want to do. You can invest with the money. You can help pay other bills with this money. You already earn. Imagine earning 19, between 19 to 3 Canadian dollars an hour. I mean, this is good money that you can start setting yourself up for success later on. We have something we call Will One, which is like peer mentoring, where first year students are given someone who's doing the same program to just help them and mentor them. If you're having a problem, there's someone to help that. We also have capstone uh, design for our student, but this comes in at the fourth year. Now, at University of Windsor, because we believe in our students uh, putting what they studied in real life, we have various competition. We have intercollegiate rocket engineering competition where students are helping in building rockets and then you compete. Then there's Society of Automotive Engineers uh, for, and then there's Collegiate Design Series and then also get to do our work with Elon Musk. And you know, I'm sure everyone knows who Elon Musk is and to work closely with his projects, then it is an advantage um, in 2019, our students got to be mentioned by Elon Musk in, and also the government of Canada in one of the magazines. So our students are actually put out there for success. Some of the places that our students do their co-op are places like Tesla, Palo Alto Network, and just to mention but a few. Now, what are the programs that we have under engineering? We have civil engineering, we have environmental engineering, we have electrical engineering, we have industrial engineering, which is a general degree or a student can combine it with a minor in business administration. So this gives you a, a feel of the two worlds. You can go into business and also you can become an engineer and just concentrate on that. Now we have also mechanical engineering which has also different specialization. So there's aerospace engineering, there's automotive, there's environmental, there's materials. So the choices for our students are so many and we have the techniques, we have the, 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 the support for our students to make sure that you succeed as a student. What are the skills that you require when you're going into engineering? You need to have problem solving skills. You have to have teamwork and collaboration. You have to be a profession and hold into ethics because you really need to uphold your ethics when it comes to some of this field. Communication is a key and also creativity because some of these programs will require you to create some things you'll be required to do some design so you need that creativity to come into place some of these skills you can learn them some of them we are born with them so you can start looking at those uh, skills as early as now as you go into it uh, problem solving could be maybe you have you in the class you're having a problem a, a friend is having a problem and it comes to your head yo maybe we need to do this and this i mean you bring it up and start building on those skills teamwork working together i'm sure you guys do um work in the lab and, and, and also working with your teachers. So that comes in place and goes into your career later on, even when you're studying and also into your career and later on in life. Uh, professionalism, you have to be professional in anything that you do in this world, especially from your graduate to even your work. And ethics, you have to uphold your ethics. You have to be morally right and you have to be keep into ethics that are set by the engineering societies and everything else. So what do we require for engineering programs? We require 
grade 12 equivalent, uh, Ontario equivalent of English, chemistry, physics, mathematics. Those are the four subjects that we actually look at when we are admitting our students. Now, let's say you're taking the Cambridge education and you dropped English at all level. Will you still get an A in? Yes, you will be able to get in because you're doing the Cambridge system. So for those who have dropped English, that is okay. But make sure you have good grades in chemistry, physics, and mathematics. Those are the main subjects that we look at when it comes to engineering. Now, what is civil engineering? What are the career tracks that you're looking at if you decide to go into uh, civil engineering? What are some, some of the sample courses we teach at University of Windsor? We teach things like ge geotechnical engineering, hydraulics, steel, concrete design, materials in civil. So it not only concerns building on the road, but also goes into geotechnology geotechnical, water resources, and also structural engineering. So you're doing all these things. And at the end of the four years, you can go into transportation, you can become an operations director, you can become a quality assurance supervisor, I mean, ensuring that the roads are good, the structures are, are in place with all the requirements. You can go into civil engineering or just the structural engineering. So this the, the careers under this are quite many. It's just not only to do with roads. You can also still go into to other things and you can go into uh, professional engineering electrical and computer engineering so what will you be learning when you come to university of Windsor? you learn things like upgrading maintaining and building electrical systems so anything that is electrical in terms of uh, computers uh, wiring anything else you'll be able to do microelectronics sensors you can become you can create chips you can create other big things and become a great engineer you you can you will be able to learn planning effective of large-scale projects that manage resources and balance consideration including cost quality and speed because uh, in the current world we are all about saving so we want to save energy we want to save our environment so you can come up with things that will help us save on the cost save on the quality of the program program that we you are, you're building and also the speed that this thing is being used career tracks are so many you're looking from biomedical engineering to code designing to computer engineering in terms of hardware and software you're looking at control engineering there are so many and most of them are listed in our uh, website you can also go into telecommunication engineering so those who are looking into telecommunication I know a lot of people are like oh people are no longer using the phone you know the wiring and everything in some parts of the world but we do need these things in some part of the world environmental engineering um this is the like the best place to to learn your environmental engineering because we were the first university to offer environmental engineering in in Canada so we've had a lot of years massive years of impacting knowledge when it comes to environmental engineering we work closely with the glacier uh, institute so our student and us being an, a, a research based institution our students are able to put what you're studying actually in real life situation sample courses include engineering mechanics materials, sustainability. As you were right now, we're looking at anything to bring sustainability into our, into our world. You, you can see everyone is talking about sustainability. If it's not sustainable, energy is anything that will help us save our planet so these are some of the things that you'll be learning and you can go into careers like biomedical biological engineer you can become a consultant you can become a design engineer you can become a modeler policy analyst to make sure that we are saving our planet in terms of sustainability when the solid waste is being exposed to the to the to the ground is it according to the standard will it harm our soil what will happen if these things happen so you'll be able to do such things in, in, in your area of uh, career. You can work into water and water assessment treatment. Make sure that the water that we are drinking, the water that our plants are taking on, the animals are taking on, is actually water that will not harm us. So these are the, some of the things that environmental engineering work into.
Industrial engineering has to do with manufacturing, logistics. You can go into healthcare, you can go into finance because our industrial engineering students can combine with business administration, as I mentioned uh, before. It is not really popular with my students in this area, but you guys can be one of the many that will be coming. So you'll be able to process and, and, and system design, design some things that will be of great impact into the world. Mechanical engineering. Now, this is one pro uh, program that is very, very popular with my student. Again, it also has the base first year general mechanical engineering and students go into material, automotive, environmental, and aerospace. Now, for students who are doing automotive, they have a really big advantage because Windsor is known as an automotive city because we have Ford, Ford Motor Company there, we have Chesler there, so they'll be able to, you know, get into the dynamics very easily. We also work closely with Tesla, so some of our students do their, their, their internship there, some work there. You'll be able to design machines, you'll be able to design motors, and there are other extracurricular activities that you can do, actually, because we have one of our students doing automotive engineering and they're looking to become formula one driver so do we just put a stop to that dream for this great student that we have no last year in 2021 in november there was a grand prix in detroit and our student got to um to participate in that in that grand prix so we let our student also have these other extra uh, curriculum activities that will see them build their careers and just fly because we want them to fly and be be big people in the region now when it comes to environmental engineering is just what i talked about uh, above things to do with making sure that our environmental is at its best we are saving the planet and all those things aerospace uh, engineering has one advantage. If a student wants to go into piloting, they can take flight classes from their third year and come out with a license to fly private planes. We are 20 minutes away from Windsor Airport. So they can take advantage of that. It is also at an extra cost. They will have to do the Canada Air exams and pass them just to make sure that they can take anything that has to do with flying and everything. Else. So they can take actually that um that advantage. They'll be looking into things like rockets and such things to just because aerospace has to do with all those things. Whereas, what are some of our co-op employers? This remember, this is when you're studying. So some of our co-op employers are these, the Fiat Chesla Automobiles, you're looking at all these great companies that our students work in. We go into our science um, for Kati, it has over 60 programs. So I'll not talk about each and every one of them. In terms of student to faculty ratio, it, again, it's one is to 17. Windsor being um, a, a research-based institution, our students can start as early as first year to do their research. Compared to now starting doing your research and you're doing your master's, you can start it as early as first year. The resources are there, the support is there, and, and, and we are able to help our students groom into what they're are looking at can you combine your science program with another arts program yes because at university of windsor we believe in supporting our students become who they want to become we have over two million scholarships that are given every year to our students we have outstanding scholars we have other type of scholarship under the science faculty that just to support our students uh, why study science at University of Windsor compared to 1 is to 32, 1 is to 45 at other schools, a few hours done the 401, 800 students in first year do the bio class versus 250. So we have 250 in the class in Windsor. So our classes again are very small. Students get to participate in research and it is rated the highest in Canada. So we have first year students taking cancer history
Thank you so much, Fiona, for that. I'm sure everyone's interest was piqued by the University of Windsor and everything that they have to offer, including all the various programs that are there from electrical engineering to industrial engineering. I'm sure the interest of most scientists and the future engineers has been piqued at this college session. So at this time, we're going to open up the floor for questions. If you have a question regarding the University of Windsor or anything you'd like to know about applications, feel free to, to ask the question and you'll be able to answer.